It was many and many a year ago, in a kingdom by the sea, that a maiden there lived whom you may know by the name of Annabelle Lee. And this maiden, she lived with no other thought than to be loved and to be loved by me. She was a child and I was a child in this kingdom by the sea. But we love with a love that was more than love. And I and my Annabelle Lee was a love that was winged surface of the heavens coverted. Right. You just press that. Okay, there you go. Yes. Okay. This is the very first episode of Dark Academia Queen. <laughs> so I think it should be called as Insomniacs. It might be changed later on, I'm telling you. <laughs> I literally did not fall asleep for like till like three o'clock this morning. Oh, I I know that pain. Sometimes I'll go to sleep until like four in the morning or five. That's insomnia for you. I know this is literally probably gonna get changed later on. Watch, but yeah. Before we dive into really, why don't we? Today's episode is brought to you by Miss Gabby over here. Hello. Yes. Yes, it was her idea, and we all know I love dark academia. Oh yeah, I need to get more dark, uh, dark academia clothes. I hadn't had a chance. Um, uh, it makes up the mood because I mean, it does. Like, there's so many topics I found on Pinterest. It's kind of where it's, it came from. On Pinterest, they had like uh, dark academia topics you can research about, and they're like saying about like you know Roman Empire stuff, blah blah blah. I'm thinking maybe we could do a podcast for that. Yeah, so I actually found one on Pandora. Mm-hmm. And it's called, I was actually listening to it last night. Um, and it's called Dark Academia, Academial. Mm-hmm. But yes. Okay. So let's see, let's test your knowledge on Edgar Allan Poe, shall we? Are we going to talk about his life or are we going to talk about the book, yeah, the, gonna... the stories he made? I'm just going to do a random true or false question real quick. Oh, dear. <laughs> Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Poe entertained his friends at college with his talents as an artist and a writer. Uh, can I just say false in that? Can I have a feeling that's like, that's false. It's true. Oh, well, darn. Okay. He left the University of Virginia to follow a dream for the military service. Wouldn't that be true? False. He did False? leave the he did leave the University of Virginia, but it wasn't just for a dream to join the military. Well, what was it for? He did, but it, it was just so he can get some money. Mm. Fair enough. Because he, <laughs> he was cut off from his um, stepdad. Ooh, is there a reason what what happened to stepdad? Oh, we'll go into that one. Trust me. Uh oh. Okay, he briefly attended West Point Military Academy. Wasn't that be false? He joined the military. True. Oh. I. Right. He had two moms that orphaned him. True. Yep. I, he had two dads that rejected him. True. <laughs> I, he, ma- he married when he was only 20 years old. That's true. I think I remember reading some stuff that somebody when he was 20. According to this, it's false. Mm. Okay, he married his cousin Virginia when she was only 12. Can I say true? Is that it true? Is. It is. Jeez. <laughs> I'm, okay, I'm seriously thinking, like, during this time, like, it had to be, like, a common thing just to marry your cousin. Well, that or your um adopted sibling. Sorry. Yeah. 
Okay, that was he very lost, common. Yes. He lost four members to TV. I was about to say true. True. It is true. All right. Okay, what are your thoughts and opinion on Poe? I actually like his writing. I really do. I um was reading that that were um besides the Raven one. Um, I read I read the House of Fall of House of Usher, and a little bit of P- the Pendulum. I need to finish that one, but I do like the way it conveys the feelings of fear. I like I I um of course the only problem is about Edgar Allan Poe is that he's very wordy, but then again back then people were very wordy. I think he was also a bit ahead of his time too, because I read where um it took him a little bit longer to get stuff published. Yeah, he was kind of the guy who made murder mysteries, didn't he? I think he was the orig- one of the original fathers of it. Yes, I'm saying. The one I made, I mean, look at Telltale Heart. I mean, that was that's a murder mystery type. Oh my, so something must have been seriously wrong with me as a child because I loved reading Edgar Allan Poe as a kid. Me too, I liked reading it too. I mean, I just like horror. I didn't, but... I love, I love horror, I love the gothic elements in any type of literature. Yeah, that's what Edgar Allan Poe is. He's very gothic or gothic, as some people say. Yes. But I still think the cask of Montiato is the best one. That is a that is one of my favorite ones by him. Yeah, that's I think that was one of all time. Yes. But we all have to admit though, he was a tortured poet. He, well, quite literally, yeah. I mean, look at his pictures of him. He kind of looks like he's not having a fun. No. I mean, I kind of surprised that he would come up with these things. He's like, <laughs> this dude, poor thing. Yes. So, what story do you think initiated um detective story, the murder mystery stories? I, I would have to say, uh, um, well, the the stuff I have read are Casca Montiato's one and Telltale Heart's another. Yep. So. This is what we know about Poe. He was born in, he um he was born in Boston, died in Baltimore. Um he mm-hmm. was he was a poet, critic, and I've been told his critics to be very harsh. Really? Like have any like stuff you found that like that he said? Oh yes, like it caused it got him some enemies for sure. Like who? Who was his enemy? <laughs> I want to know. I like, want to know the drama. Like many local writers, um, like he would go and critique different stories as to all of that, and he was not. It's kind of like you when you go to a Cajun restaurant and you get mad uh, whenever. Get mad? It's just as long as you don't like broil crawfish or crawfish, like some people around here do. You're fine. Yes. But it was in 1841 when um, the murders of Rue Merck was the what initiated a modern detective story. Hmm. And the Raven um, was, can you believe, the best known poems of in national literature. Well, obviously, I read the Raven oh, yeah. back in uh, American literature class. I remember reading that. It's like so fun to read. But it was weird. I was kind of thinking like what is it what was this dude smoking? Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. But but speaking of which, did you know the Telltale Heart he had a hard time getting that published? I am not surprised. Because writers cause getting something published in that time was like very impossible. Um, because um, they wanted it to be softer, not so mm-hmm. loud. So softer, not so loud. What do y'all mean? <laughs> what do y'all mean? I don't yeah, make any so, sense. No. But I mean, J.K. Um, Rowling had a. Sorry, I'm not. I mean, go uh, ahead. Go ahead. J.K. Rowling. I heard read that J.K. Rowling 
had a hard time publishing Harry Potter. Like it took her maybe like ten tries, if I remember correctly, to like get it published. So I mean, with the fact that you're telling me that Edgar Allan Poe has struggled with publishing his work, I'm thinking I'm not surprised, especially considering he's like the first, the, the first murder mystery writer in American history, if not all time. I know he's definitely the first known one for sure. Indeed. But but let's let's talk about the fact that he married his cousin. Oh my gosh. Um, and how okay, he's twenty twenty years old when he married a twelve year old girl. Is that right? Am I am I interpreting this correctly? Well, let's we'll see. I know she was 12, 13, around the time um they got married, but so it wouldn't be a big deal. They had to um put they put 23 on the marriage certificate to keep scandal from happening. Oh, so it's not supposed to happen. They were like first cousins for crying out loud. Why? Why? That's like an Alabama thing, I'm telling you. I don't even know it's Alabama. I think it's a little bit more advanced. Yeah, it's like it had to be like very common at this time. Yes, I mean I I do remember reading a lot of like authors would marry their cousins, their first cousins or whatever. Yes. But okay, so, still. Yeah. So but Virginia Clem was thirteen and Poe was twenty seven. Mm. Uh-huh. In today's in today's time, that would not be acceptable. I mean the fact that they, you know, had to change the birth certificate for the girl to be twenty three back in that time, I mean doesn't sound like this it was successful then as it is now. She was basically groomed at a young age. Jeez. Damn. I didn't know about this. I kind of just thought that Eddie Arnold Poe was a little bit weird. A little depressed. But not this. Damn. Well, he well I believe he did have got... depression. I believe he had depression. Oh, yeah. But at that sure time, we gotta remember at that time, it wasn't as common to, or known, well known. Well, I mean, I remember reading that depression was called something else back then. It was like called like the melancholy or something like that. Something like that, yeah. But you gotta think, he lost his mom. He had a terrible relationship with his stepdad. Mm-hmm, yeah. That can be agreed upon. Yes. But here is a brief biography of Poe. Shall we get started? Oh, gosh. Today, he is he is by many a true master of the horror genre. Mm-hmm. Poe's like off Poe like often made his work sounds like small potatoes in comparison. It sounds predictable that the man who wrote the classics, such as the as the Assessive, the Raven, or the Stomach Turning, the Pit, and the Pendulum, pend, uh, Pendulum. <laughs> would have lived equally grim moments of his own life to be inspired to write such horrors. He was born January 19, 1809, the middle child of a couple of actors. Mm. Interestingly, it was believed that some of Poe, Edgar Allan Poe, was named at, was named after the character in the King in King Lear, in which which the character was supposedly playing at the time of his birth. Now, he had a very tr- interesting, ter- terrible childhood. His dad left the family the year after his birth. His mom died of consumption, which wh- which is a no, no TB. Oh, it was TB? Known as, it was known as TB at the time. Ah. And in 1811, leaving Poe and his siblings orphans, um, Edgar was unofficially adopted by a well-to-do merchant, John Allen, who he remained with until early adulthood. His relationship with his adopted family became strained after he came into some serious debt. 
As a young college student, due to passion for gambling, which his family didn't approve of, it was around this time that his writing career started. And when he worked as a newspaper writer. Um, now, after this, he enrolled in the military at the age of 18, where he served for, t- for about two years while writing some short stories and poems, but eventually received an early discharge and briefly reconciled with his adoptive father. But their relationship was still very rocky. Now, this is where we get to meet Virginia. Oh, just a pause on this. He 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 sounds like goth Mozart. I mean, I know. Okay, something seriously wrong because I love this kind of stuff. Well, I mean, <laughs> I mean, if you're okay, how are you? I just love I just love dark dark elements and stuff like that. I don't know what it is. We yeah yeah, but I mean, I mean, geez, this dude. <laughs> I wonder what he did that kind of caused a rocky relationship with his adopted father. Like, oh yeah, dad. But still, yeah. I mean, you don't want to be in debt. I don't. I don't. I kind of don't blame the set dad for feeling Cutting that way. Him off. But apparently, though, they had a rocky relationship his whole childhood. So, oh, I wonder why this dude's messed up in the head well we'll talk about that losing two moms and having two parent, two dads initially reject you kind of takes a toll mm-hmm. on you yeah yeah but um now let's now now virginia clemen when he, he he was 26 and she was 13, and a rather unusual marrying age, even back then, it was probable that their marriage inspired a lot of his writings. Not surprising. Um, And they were together for 11 years until her death. Also of consumption. The death of a beautiful, beloved woman in the common theme of Annabelle Lee. Um, and it's very interesting to note that it was also a common theme in his short life. His mom's death when he was two, and his stepmother's death when he was 20, and then his wife's death when he was in his early 30s. How did he not go insane before this? I think he probably was insane. True. He just masked very well. <laughs> no, I think he was. Yeah. I just think. <laughs> You see his writing, the pit, the, uh, pit and pendulum's kind of like, buddy, are you okay? Yes. Mm, but seriously, Perry his cousin. I still can't. Anyway, um, okay. Let's talk about now. Anna, no, Annabelle Lee was a very interesting one to read because I was just actually going back and rereading some of his poems and short stories this morning. Yeah. What was it about? I haven't had a chance to read Annabelle Lee yet. It was basically about a young couple um, who were lovers by the sea and she died and he basically sleeps at her grave at night. Oh. Uh, I mean, it could be worse. The, hey, it, um, did did Edgar when 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 uh, Jill, Virginia died? Did Edgar Allan Poe ever took her corpse and brought it to his house? It's not it's not believed that he did. It is believed, as far as I know. Hey, I mean, it's not surprisingly from all the true crime stuff I do. It's not. I'm not. I wouldn't be surprised. Unless he's like thought about it and just said, "Hey, I'm gonna write a book about that." Let's. Oh, we can look that up real quick. Yes, let's look that up. <laughs> I'm in more book tech now. Hang on. You're good. I I got the book. I got the Edgar Allan Poe book. I couldn't stop myself. Nice. I mean, look at this dude. This this dude does not look like he's in a good town a good time. 
No, he does not. This dude is like the the um <laughs> this, this dude was like he made the atomic bomb. And the atomic bomb didn't even exist. Hang on. I do need um We've gotta look this up now. I'm definitely gonna read the um the mask of red death. I mean, that sounds like about tuberculosis. Which I think is awful. That disease is awful. Mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this dude does not look good. <laughs> he does he's not. not. He, he, he looks like he... <laughs> he does not look like he's in a good, <laughs> good frame of mind. Well, I'm having a hard time finding an answer for that one, but upon Annabelle Lee is saying that necrophilia, it could be used to help describe Annabelle Lee. So, possibly. Quite possibly, but would, but not too sure on that one. <laughs> we don't know. No, we do not. <laughs> I'm pretty sure but bet place a bet that yes he did something like that he probably did dig up dig up virginia's corpse and brought it. you know i'm not it wouldn't be the first time something like that happened in literature for sure oh gosh this, this dude <laughs> they need to make a movie <laughs> they really do they need to make a movie of all his crazy antics and all these anecdotes yes oh my gosh what's that one um we read it in school now that we started talking about it yeah it's the one that about the um and who has um the, the corpse in his, in his house i don't remember the title but i but i do remember reading oh something my gosh. about that it takes place in that fictional town in mississippi yes oh is it is it oh yeah it's faulkner faulkner Yes. Oh my gosh. But it's it's a woman. It was a woman that had a corpse of his of. Well, I don't know. But I don't know if they really were in love with each other. But she was obsessed with him. A rose for you Emily. Know what that... Huh. A rose, rose for Emily. For yes. 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 That. Oh, I mean, I was. That story was. This thing got published back then, and we're reading this at school. But oh there's gosh. a case in real life. There was a case of that. Like I remember ca reading a murder. No, a murder case. It because I mean the woman didn't really get murdered. She just died from an illness, and some guy that was like obsessed with her dug up her corpse. And yes, it was in Florida. I think she was a mortician. Yeah, I think it was he was a mortician. Yeah, I think he was a mortician and managed to kind of like decorate her body to make it look good quote unquote and yes. she, he would hide it around her around his house you know what case i'm talking about i do but i i'm having a hard time thinking of the name of that case now i mean I'm you can look, look it up on youtube you can look it up on youtube of a guy guy hiding a uh, corpse in house and you probably find the case Fine, let me look this up I have to because my mom, my mom found a podcast about this that talks about this case. I don't remember where what, what it called because this was back in like 2013 when I heard about this case. Hang on, my search is going to be messed up. Oh, mine's already messed up. In corpse, how? Uh, well. You should be able to find it. Okay, there's um police find a decomposing body in Florida man's bedroom. That's that's I think that's the case I'm talking about. I feel like this one's a long like like back in the forties when this happened. It was in like a picture like a light. Huh? 
the butcher of Plainfield. Uh, I think I think that's probably what it is. Yep, it's the butcher of Plainfield. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Is that case? Yes. 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 Okay. I am gonna <laughs> have to add this to my bookmarks now, and to... don't judge. Okay. No judgment. I mean, you're talking about somebody who's reading Edgar Allan Pope just for fun. That is so very true. But um, I mean. I feel like all these stories of Edgar Allan Poe are just allegories of his own life. Look, Poe walked so Taylor Swift can run. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, like Taylor Swift. <laughs> yes. He walked so she could run. I mean, you. I, it makes you wonder if this man actually did kill somebody. Like, did, did he... Did the casca monte out of to somebody? Did you did you bury somebody alive in a crypt? Okay, like first of all, if you are sober, don't go in there to begin down there to begin with. Oh, in fact, don't go in the catacombs. Period. That's exactly. Only in the catacombs. But then again, you know the bro the the bro was drunk. You, you do stupid things clearly. when you're drunk. You do stupid things when you're drunk. Don't do don't do drugs, kids. That's the moral of the story. Don't do drugs. Don't drink and go into very closed spaces. Don't drink. Don't drink. Period. How about that? Exactly. How about that? That could be the whole thing. It could be just about. Don't. Uh, it could be just a whole. Um. Hey, wait a minute. What this book published? This story published during the temperance movement. I believe so. Well, let me look this up because I mean, if that's the case, that could be about that the temperance movement. I know the temperance movement was back in the in the U.S. for sure. Um, yeah, because I know Poe took a lot of his real life experience and turned it into literature. Oh yeah, I mean, the whole um, what's it called, Annabelle Lee, or what it called, was kind of as a oh yeah example. For but, I mean, it makes you wonder if these stories are not ju- are just an, an elaborate biography of Poe's life that he actually did. Like, I mean, what if Edgar Allan Poe was actually like a serial killer and he's like this, the whole of the stories are just his confessions? What if? What if, indeed. That would explain so I mean, much right now. Like, what if? Hang on. Um, during the 19th, 20th century. Okay, so 19th to 20th century that we um, it, the pro, pro, the uh, temperance movement was kind of happening. So Casca Montiato, when was that published, or at least written? Okay, 1846. So, it, technically speaking, this could be an allegory about this. Could be a like a statement about him. Against alcohol, maybe, or unless he does a confession murder. The guy was an alcoholic, so. Oh, he was. <laughs> I'm not surprised. Yes. You're talking about the guy, like the character guy, or you're talking about Edgar? Yeah, no, Poe Poe was an alcoholic, so in general. Mm. Unless that the Fortunato, that's his name, was Edgar Allan Poe's. You know, and it's an allegory of him. And not Montressor or whatever how you pronounce his name. Alright. Yes. Okay, I'm about to name some quotes from some of uh, Poe's literature. See if you can ma- um, match it to the, the work. Okay. Okay, the first one is it will be found, in fact, that the ingenuous are always fanciful and the truly imaginative never otherized and qu- analytic. I have never heard of that quote before. It is from the murders of Rue Mort. I have not read one that one. I mean, let me see if this book has it. Murders of is it a poem or is it a? Uh, I have it. Never mind. <laughs> All right. The next one is. I continued, as was my wont, 
to smile in his face, and he did not perceive that my smile now was at the thought of his emulation. Is that Telltale Heart? No, we were just talking about it. Is it's the uh, the more? No, the cask of Amontillado. Oh, I don't remember the quote. Oh, here's a good one. I don't one. remember the quote at all. Thrilled me, filled me with fantastic terrors never felt before. That's Raven. <laughs> yes. Okay. But we loved with a love that was more than love. I am my Annabelle Lee. That's Annabelle Lee, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, that's. Jeez, I am like thinking the more I think about it, the worse it gets. Okay, this was. There was an iciness, a sinking, a sickening of the heart, an unredeemed dreariness of thought, which no goading of imagination could torture in, into all of the sublime. Is. Did you, did you hear me? Huh? I, I, I said Telltale Heart. It is probably from that one, but it's from the Fall of the House of Usher and other tales. Oh, wait. I think, um, well, I don't think I'll pull. It's from that, it's like from a series. I'm like, oh, here's a good one. You should know this one because we went to go see Bethany in this one. Hmm. What? The Raven, Nevermore. The Raven. Yes. Okay, surprisingly, Wallace did a really good job on that. I'm not going to lie. Then, um, they made a play of it, right? Well, like they did a pay- play off Edgar Allan Poe and stuff. I did not see it. They actually did I did a really not good see job. it. No one told me this. Well, then again, I was probably busy. All right. Let's see if we can find a good one. Okay. As a poet and as a mathematician, he could reason well. As a mere mathematician, he could not have reasoned at all. I've never heard that quote before. It's the pure horn letters. Mm. Yeah, I don't think I've read that one yet. Okay. I'm going to read an excerpt now from The Telltale Heart. Of course, I'm Uh one of my favorites. Okay. I had my head in and was about to open the lantern when the thumb slipped upon the tin fastening and an old man sprang up in the bed crying out, Who's there? I kept a quiet fall and said nothing. For a whole hour, I did not move a muscle. And in the meantime, I did not hear him lie down. He was still sitting up in the bed listening, just as I have done night after night, hearkening to the death watches in the wall. I actually love that one because... Go ahead. And you go first. No, I think I actually love that story because one is actually, we got to see the guiltier side of like if a, mm-hmm. if a murder actually feels guilt for something that happens. <laughs> yeah, I mean that, I mean I only never understood why the guy would want to kill that old man. I mean, it's just because of his eye. And I was like, bro. <laughs> no, but yeah, that was actually one of my favorites. I think that was one that really, really got me into Telltale, into Poe. Yeah. I'm not reading in middle school and people bored and all that stuff. And I was like, man, this is actually pretty cool. Yes. Okay. 
But Fortunato, oh my gosh. Going back to that, it's like, that was a very unfortunate name to have. Fortunato, yeah. yeah. And uh, keep in mind that, I mean, I used to, when I read that, I had like a fear of the front of Paris Catacomb. <laughs> and I'm like, thinking to myself, oh, the story, I don't like it. I mean, oh, I have you ever seen the footage of somebody got, getting lost? There's like actual footage you can find on YouTube of a person getting lost in the catacombs. I will actually have to look this up now. I can send you a link. I mean, of course, it's kind of a documentary now, but it shows the footage and it is haunting. It is absolutely haunting. Hang on. Paris Catacombs footage I can a link okay well this one um well this is not the original but I can send you this one first it's not the original one it's, it still has a commentary which sucks but you know it, it, oh. it, it gets the point I will definitely give it a watch for sure. But like, <laughs> um, re uh, to watch that. I will have when... to. Yeah, I don't know if this is the original. Let me see. This one doesn't have commentary. It's the same video, but it has the music with it. Which is significantly worse. But uh, do you still have a favor if you want to not sleep at night? Watch that one. Nice. Yeah. Now, I, while you're doing that, I'm going to read you an excerpt from the cast of Amontillado. Oh, gosh. <laughs> but to these words, I hurt and hurt in vain for a reply. I grew impatient. I called aloud. Fortunato, no one answered. Fortunato, no one answered still. I thrust the torch through the remaining aperture and let it fall within. And then forth, came forth, in return only a jingling of the bells. My heart grew sick on the account of the dampness of the catacombs. I hastened to make an end for, of my labor. I forced the last stone into position. I plastered it up against a new mason masonry, and I re I re-erected the old rampart of bones. For the half a century, no mortal has disturbed him in pace. Um, I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce that word. <laughs> yeah, that's like the end passage of the of. And what was I going to say? I was going to say something about that, but I forgot my train of thought. Well, okay, what's funny? What's funny is that in Story Fortunata Freemason, and which is like an organization and all stuff, and like here's this dude killing him by being a Mason. And by being a Mason, I mean just like, you know, walling him in. Oh yeah, I remember. Um, it was one of my literature classes at Wallace, and we had to do like an essay on this. Mm hmm. And like, I think one of the theories that was brought up was that this was actually a old, a drunken old man who was at a bar just telling the story, and nobody was listening to him. Hmm. Huh. But what? Why would that be the case? Like, why would a drunken old man? something like that maybe he was just known to be one of those if i had to guess maybe just home have you ever met one of those old those people that you're like okay they're just talking crap and all of this right yeah but like something as coherent as that i mean i mean it was a person's definitely like sane well you know sane but you know what's coherent. sane yeah, was sane and coherent today. <laughs> but no, that was like one of the theories from us. Like it was a drunk, it was an old man who was drunk and just reliving his um 
well, eccentric old man, let's rephrase that. Probably yeah. just drunk at a bar. He was just telling his story to anybody that will listen to him. You know, if someone back then was telling a story, a horror story, I think a lot of people would be listening. <laughs> yeah. I mean, morbid curiosity exists. They do yeah. have a podcast called be Morbid, listening. so... Yeah, I mean, who wouldn't be listening to somebody saying, "Oh yeah, so this dude, he was bur- he's gonna bury this guy alive because he, um, and he just left them there <laughs> for fifty okay. years." I think younger me would have probably been sitting there like, I, younger me would have been fighting with my mom like, "Mom, let's listen to what he's saying," and she's <laughs> yeah. like, "No, no, no, let's go." That's true. I mean, I'm pretty sure the younger people back then were like, I want to hear this. And then when the parents were like, no, you don't have to. We don't have to. I mean, what about that drunk guy that I go around the boat just saying, okay, so this dude that just you know, got buried alive. <laughs> yeah, and also <laughs> another so morbid. Another theory was that he had Alzheimer's and dementia and he was just telling the story. Um, but the thing is, though, I my grand my one my my papa's was I had Alzheimer's, and the thing is, the things he said were very oh, incoherent. Yeah, like they made little. And for this, the Casca Montiato, it does make sense. There's a plot. Somebody for all with Alzheimer's, there there is no plot. It is just jargon. Yeah. So a person like... that's coming up with that with Alzheimer's, I mean, that person has a really really sharp mind. No, like some of these stories, like you can imagine, like we got read in school, they probably would not be read today. Mm -hmm. Like some of the stories, like some, like the cast of Montalado and stuff, like some parents would probably have a fit about that today. Oh Lord, I mean, but then again, people, (laughs) people had a fit with uh, Harry Potter. People had with To Kill a Mockingbird. People had a fit with. uh, I read V.C. Andrews for fun. V.C. Andrews. Look it up. She's really good. She's one. Of, she's if you've seen heard of the Flowers in the Attic series, it's yes, once get, that one. Once you get past the incest, it's really her stories. Are well, really I mean that's you know, I mean, have you ever read like Game of Thrones? I mean, that 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 was about incest. Well, you told me that, so I'm gonna try to read the books with it. Try to. Yeah, because like with the show, um, I just. Like the sh- I think there was just too much hype around the time when the show came out that like, okay, and I, it was like didn't really care to watch it. I heard it's actually really good. I heard it's really really good, but I I hadn't like I don't even know if it's streaming. Flowers in the attic. Go on Lifetime. You can watch all the um VC Andrew movies that are out. I probably will. Hold on, let's yeah. see if flowers. Was streaming. Say flowers in the attic for last, though. You have to work your way up to that one. Yeah, but then again, I, I'm I'm a veteran for a lot of horror and shocking yeah. fiction. Yeah. Let's see. Um, Heaven was actually pretty decent. Um, Ruby that was really good as well. Mm-hmm. And Dawn, those are like some of the ones that I was I was just watching. Heaven, then um Dawn, then Ruby, then VC Andrews. In hmm. um flowers in the attic. Hmm. Hold on. Hold on. Just be. Yeah. Nineteen eighty-seven. Seven. Oh my lord. Now that that'll be. Oh. Uh, oh. That's. Uh. Yeah. I can watch it for free on Tubi. Cool. Yeah, and you can't. You should be able to watch it for free on live on the Lifetime, as unless they changed it all of a sudden. Well, I mean. But yeah, um, now let's get back on topic, shall we? <laughs> uh, okay. It's okay. We're mean. This is just the fruit that are. Yeah. Hey, Poe walked passed. so. Look, Poe walked so. The the lot of the authors today could run. That's all it yeah. was. This dude. 
I'm just like curious, like when he came out, you know he had to be controversial at the time. Oh, I'm pretty sure. He's still kinda I mean hiding a, a dead a corpse out of your your house is not entirely I would, great. Okay, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna have to do some more research and find out like if he actually did, like if he slept with her before he was like, Okay. I mean, there's like two stories that he made about that. One is Anna Lee. And the other one's like I forgot what the story's called about this some hiding a corpse in some person's house. I mean, you made two stories. <laughs> yes, but it's like here it is. But this is just but our love. It was stronger by far than love. Of course, of those who were older than we, of many far wiser than we. And neither the angels in heaven above, nor the demons down under the sea, can ever desevere my soul from the soul of the beautiful Annabelle Lee. Mm. No, but it ends with from the moon oat net from the moon never beams without bringing me dreams of the beautiful Annabelle Lee, and the stars never rise but I feel the bright eyes of the beautiful. Annabelle Lee. And so all the night tide I lie down by the side side of my darling, my darling, my life, and my bride in her sepulchre um there by the sea, in her tomb by the surrounding sea. Why am I messing this guy in like the corpse bride universe? Imagine Imagine if Tim Burton did a movie on him. That would be perfect. <laughs> that would be perfect. I mean, this like sh- falls in like from the Tim Burton movies. This like it shows falls in his area, in my opinion. I mean, I think that's where Tim Burton got his inspirations from. Is from Edgar Allan. Yeah. I mean, Lovecraft got his inspiration from Edgar Allan Poe. I mean, why not? Why not make a Tim Burton? Like clay a claymation of Edgar Allan Poe's life or his stories, and just call it a day. Yes, we'll see. But of course, the problem is, I mean, people, just the idea of like having a, a corpse in your house does not sound fun. That does not, and not to mention, a lot of people don't want to take risks about on on stuff like that. I mean, look at H. H. Holmes. Oh gosh, I read about that dude. Oh my lord, that dude's mm. one of my f- no, literally. So that was like one of the first original cases that really got me into true crime, and it also got I me. Mean... And not gonna lie, it also got me like with some knowledge of the World Fair. Y- yeah, isn't that that dude's the first American serial sil- killer, wasn't he? The first known American serial killer. Yeah, and he made like a house. And like now a it's used and now it's used as a museum in Chicago. Really? Yes. It is. Let me look it up now. Oh my own crowd. We should probably should go there one day. We should plan a trip. I agree. We probably have to fly there though. I'm not I don't feel like driving all the way up there to Chicago. Thank you very I much. Don't, I don't blame you. This dude, I mean, H.H. H. Holmes. This dude's, I don't like this dude's face at all. I don't like that face at all. Ugh. Yeah, it's like. Hang on. Oh. It's kind of like the uh the house that Jack built. Have you ever heard of that movie? Yes. You probably should, yeah. Have you watched it? Not yet, but I plan to. You probably should. I think that's probably where they get, um, it's kinda, I think it's, I don't think it's directly based off of H.H. H. Holmes, but I know that it has a similar kind of idea. Well, you gotta think a lot of these, um, 
movies and stuff, like, look at Criminal Minds and all of those. Like, a lot of these serial killers and murders inspired the case for a lot of show, a lot of the shows we have today. Oh, yeah. Hell, oh, yeah, that's right. Hmm. Hey, I'm reading about H.H. Holmes and all that stuff, like, hang on, just give me one second. You're good. Well, hey, uh, H.P. Lovecraft made a story about him. If you can believe that. I can believe it. Huh. They were going to make a show called... Have you ever heard this book called The Devil in the White City? Like, it's all over in um, Books a Million. The Devil in the White City. I mean, apparently they're going to make a movie about him. That's supposed to be about him. But it never oh, got adapted. But no, he's a very sick and interesting guy. Ah. Uh, I mean, he made a ho- he turned a house into like a dang one labyrinth. I mean, you might as well like he made like the like he might as well call him Daedalus in this one. Let's see. He made the a labyrinth. Ew. This dude. Ooh. The more I read about this dude, the worse it gets. Oh my goodness, so I just found out there, so there was a serial killer who was inspired by Edgar Allan Poe. Oh no. Oh no. Who was this? So it was published by Professor Paul T- Taylor in the psychological thriller The Maddening. Okay, I'm going to have to look, it, look these up now and give them a read. Yeah. So this is a fictional story. This is not a real person that got that said, yeah, I'm gonna murder someone based off of the Edgar Allan Poe stories. Yep. Nice. Definitely got to get some more research into that a little bit later on. No, but Annabelle Lee was like one of his last known, well, believed to be his last published poem in his lifetime before his death two years later. I can. No, so Annabelle Lee was like believed to be like one of the last, his last known published pieces of work before he died hmm. in two years later. Damn. But how did Edgar Allan Poe die? Did he die from tuberculosis or did he die from something else? Did he die? I can't remember. He died of something called crinitis, which is, according to Google, don't hold me to it, was an antiquated term for swelling and congestion of the brain. Huh. That's... Referring to so, death by means of alcoholism. Mm. It's also believed that he died from rabies, too, but there was never really any <laughs> Oh, dear. That's a horrible way to go. Okay. Theories about Poe's death. I'm going to look this up now. So here are some theories about his death. Alcoholism, brain tumor, carbon monoxide poisoning, flu, rabies, a beating in heavy metal poisoning. Sorry. Like, do people still get rabies? Yeah, you can get rabies. I mean, I've seen animals get rabies a lot. Yeah, but has any human actually gotten or died of rabies here in the last decade? There's one person that died from rabies in Alabama. 
It's like a, a two or three year. Interesting. Let me look it up. These casualties in Um, yes. There's a lot of people die in, um, yeah, fewer than 10 people die, uh, than 10 people in the U.S. die from rabies each year. Interesting. You learn something new every day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're not, we never, you, I don't think you ever can get immune to rabies, because rabies, mm -hmm. um, I mean, I think because that can make a zombie apocalypse if you wanted to. Possibly. Well, no, I didn't really get into like the whole zombie thing. So, well, I'm just saying, like, yeah, that thing, that thing's awful. But I think I will say that's the worst disease, in my opinion. That's the worst disease. Okay. Anyway, but here are some fifteen. Here are some fifteen facts about. Edgar Allan Poe, the man behind the myth. <laughs> the man behind the myth. It should be Edgar Allan Poe, the man, the myth, the legend. <laughs> the man, the myth, the legend. Or I okay. should say the man, the myth, the legend. Okay, so his birth name was Edgar Poe. Contrary to popular belief, Allen was not his middle name. Oh. Huh. Why did he change it? Um, so... He, when he was he was born in Boston, he had no middle name to David and Eliza Poe in 1809. David Poe abandoned him. And oh, wow. when he was christened um, um, by Francis Allen of Virginia, he took her last name. He took um, John and Pr Francis's last name for his middle name. Hmm. Although he typically went by Eddie. Wait, 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 repeat that. But he typically went by Eddie to people. <laughs> he does not look like an Eddie. I'm sorry. Why am I picturing this dude looking like gothic Eddie from Ed? You know that show, Ed and Eddie? Yeah. Oh my. Oh, I forgot about that. Yes. <laughs> picturing this dude basically look like that <laughs> oh my gosh okay fact number two he was a champion swimmer okay so he held a local record for swimming seven miles against a current up in the James River in Richmond Virginia okay okay interesting he was a college dropout. That's not surprising. This this next fact makes me feel very what's the word I'm looking for behind now. He published his first book at 18. Oh, huh. well, I didn't publish. I mean, nice. Okay, <laughs> he had but he had a potentially bright military future. What do I think? He he quit. Before quitting, just one year to pursue a career in writing. Hmm. What, why would he quit? He wanted a writing career. That's all. It, he wanted to follow his dreams. Mm, fair enough. Let's see. He was the first American professional writer. Huh. That's thing. He had many rivalries with fellow writers. As I we said earlier, he was a critic and all of that, so most call mockingly called him, quote, the professor. Huh. Oh, gosh. He created Sheldon. a detective story genre. Yep, he did. Tilt a heart. He, he was a major influence for future sci-fi writers. Well, H.P. Lovecraft. In his essay, Eureka, um, a prose poem was tortured upon the Big Bang Theory almost a century before it was a popular in scientific circles. Hmm. Interesting. We all know he married his 13-year-old cousin. 
Mm-hmm. He always struggled. He was always struggling with money. The Raven well. was now. Okay, before I say this one, what you date the Raven was inspired by depression. So it was actually inspired by um the Charles Dickens quote the called the quote the crow. That's interesting. Yeah, but yeah, remember at this time there was no such thing as copyright laws and all of this, so. Well, you could take I mean, his work. Huh. So, but here's it, something. Poe's most famous work, both in his lifetime and after his death, was The Raven. The poem was well, published January 1845 and almost instantly made Poe a household name. However, not many know that Charles Dickens may have inspired the role of taking of the Tolkien Raven, when Poe reviewed Dickinson's no, Dickens' novel *Burnaby Rudge* in 1840, he was amused to learn that the Tolkien bird character Crip was based off Dickens' pet, real pet crow. When he published *The Raven* four years later, not many literary critics were surprised to find the Tolkien Raven was inspired by his work, a personal pet. That's very interesting. I wonder if Charles Dickens and um uh Edgar Allan Poe were friends. They might have ran in the same circles, but it's hard to it's hard to know. Well, I mean, they have very similar well commentary. Oh yeah. Okay, um fact number thirteen, he never recovered from his wife's death. Well, I that mean Anna happen. Lee. Annabelle Lee. He was poss- Poe's death was possibly the result of coping. Well, a lot of writers did cope with um bad um things by in their writing. Oh yeah. I mean look at a Mozart, but even though Mozart's a mu- musician, but still much of his crap that's been going on in his life was kind of inspired from Yeah. You know. Yes, and the last interesting fact is his obituary was wi- written by his rival. Okay, interesting. So the writing rivalries of Poe's life come full came full circle to his death. Rufus Griswold, long mocked by Poe's criticism, wrote an unflattering obituary for Poe that painted him as a philandering alcoholic opium addict. <laughs> he even added to the account that his biography. Memoir of the author, which used forged documents to paint Poe in a terrible dark light. And while Griswold's work is negatively influenced by generations of readers um, about Poe's character, nothing could take away Poe's enduring poetic genius found in his works. What if this whole bearing his cousin was false? And was just like that rival guy? Like, what if? What if? Oh, my gosh. Oh, gosh. This dude. I said it before, and I was saying it. Poe dwarfed so many could run. Mm hmm. You made a lot of, um, and you're, um, can't really see. Oh my man, question. I'm getting all hungry. Me too. My, my here's my final question: How is it that we were allowed to read this stuff in school? Like this had to. I don't know, but then again, I mean, different I... time. Yes, I mean we read Frankenstein. We read, um, Lord of Flaws. And, I mean, then again, I mean people in around. A little bit more. I mean, we're still reading that, but in Frank, a lot of parents want in Frank out of the school system. Yeah, but where? But like, you know, you're gonna always gonna counter like, like all literature. I mean, Harry Potter has violence. All the Shakespeare's has Shakespeare stories has violence. I mean, look at Macbeth. Macbeth. Oh um, yeah. 
I mean, come on. Let's just be real. Violence is, is exciting. Yes. It's like a train wreck with some of it that you know you shouldn't watch, but... Mm. Um, I think you probably... Uh, that shouldn't be talked about is, you know, sexual stuff, but... No, that's why I, I mean, draw the line. That's why I draw the line at. Yeah. I, like, but we don't, we don't really... That's, we don't have stories that, are, are, that deal with that, except Lolita, but we don't read Lolita, and you probably shouldn't read Lolita. Oh, yeah. I read Lolita before. It was... I think it was one of my first fun readings. Huh? It was one of my for fun readings. When you say... Like, we all have a, books that we read for fun, and books that we read because we have to read. Oh, Lolita's so awful. <laughs> yeah, um, you should definitely read Lolita and Tyran. Um, that that one's really good. I hadn't had a chance to read Lolita, but synopsis, and that's myself. Yeah, um, I'll send you a link to the book that we read in my in my AP English is class English class. Oh, <laughs> that's so. Uh, I know disgusting. you have too many. I know you have a lot of TBR. You still have yet to read, so. Yeah, I mean, crap! I just bought this book just yesterday. Okay, what is your final thoughts on Edgar Allan Poe? I like his writing, but this dude needs to like you know chill. You need to chill. <laughs> just chill. <laughs> Okay, what's been your favorite Edgar Allan Poe today? Poem or short story? Short story is my favorite. Truth be told, I like short stories, but you know, but you know, I can understand why people like poems because they're just easier to read. Oh yeah, definitely. I would say for me, Edgar Allan Poe will always be one of my favorite uh, poets and authors out there. Indeed, he has, he's a really good writer. He had but a very the, dark life. But his, well, his lore, the Edgar lore or the Poe lore is, uh, oh. Like, he falls into the dark academia category for sure. I don't know why I want to call it dark academia, but I'll call it black academia or something like but that. He like, falls it, into, it falls into this category for sure. It definitely Maybe. does, but. <laughs> <laughs> He just so much, so much about his life is so sad, though. That's the thing. Uh, he, I think he's a very dramatic. He's a very, very dramatic boy. Like having two, um, two moms in your life die, and then having two father figures reject you. Yeah, it is a little sad. It takes a toll on you, honestly. I'm pretty. I mean, I, I mean, who doesn't? I mean, you got a lot of people. If people who have like daddy issues or mommy issues, they you don't turn out right. Hey, watch it with the daddy issues and mommy issues. <laughs> That's not. I'm no no diss on you or anybody I'm, else. I'm just no, saying. I have no shame in admitting that I have some daddy issues for sure. Yeah. But no, like he took a lot of his real real life experience and put it into his writing. Even though somebody yeah. was very creepy, like with his thirteen-year-old cousin and everything. But you want to know who's a little bit worse than like around Who? Lovecraft. Lovecraft. Okay, his biography. This dude. You may just give you his books. I have his books. Definitely. When well, next time, whenever we're in the same town again, definitely. Yeah, I want you to read his stuff. Well, let me tell you, there was something else. And the, his lore, the Lovecraft lore, his the, the, the author's biography, uh, uh, he's way worse than Edgar Allan Poe. I know. Way worse. Edgar is like, you know, tame compared to this dude. Yes, 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 yes. But, yes. That's going to be it for this very first episode. In an hour and 13 minutes, we did pretty good. Indeed. Okay, I had fun. I did too. No, no. Quit. If you enjoyed today's episode, please uh, 
comment something you want us to talk about next and a topic you would love for us to talk about. Um, you can find me on Facebook and Instagram um, for any updates on this podcast. This is also a sister podcast of Just a Breezy Chat, Sassy Southern Bell, and Trick Arm Lounge. Y'all have a great day.